Today is Monday, April the 20th. We're going to go through the same set of uh, data that we always go through, but we're going to, this time we, the cloud is really starting to um, have an effect on a lot of the stocks and on the S&P. Volume, we'll look at the, our, our volume bar charts later, but the Dow started moving up in the morning and then came the news. Well, overnight we had a problem with the price of oil, but then came the news that that um, that the people trying to close out the futures were unable to get any bids. And so the price of the current month's futures dropped almost to zero. Um, people who own the futures couldn't sell them. So the long-term futures, take a look at those, and you know they're not so bad, but the short-term futures are indicative of the fact that you know nobody's driving. Uh, there's fewer trucks on the road. There's less commerce taking place. So when you have less demand for oil, that's not a good sign for the economy. So the market responded to that. And in part, it could also be responding to the fact that some states are saying that they're going to open up their economies next week. And a lot of governors are saying the testing isn't in place. Less than... 0.1% of the population has been tested right now for COVID-19. So you decide if you think that it's safe to go shopping again when in your state they open up the economy. Your call. Advancers and decliners, 70% to 25%, so 3 to 1, which takes the stock market breadth down. Here's a chart showing the 12 months oscillator. A little bit different than you want the one you see from McClellan. Um, but you can see that we had a high here, a lower high here, a lower high here. And now we have this one. Um, the worst thing that could happen, I think, is if we had a bounce up tomorrow and it came in lower than these three points. That would be indicative of what happened here. You see this area here, we had high, lower high, lower high, lower high and then a drop. And then the market started to just flatten out. Um, here we also had the same thing, high, lower high, lower high. This is a lower high from this one. This is a lower high from this one. Uh, and then the market took a drop. We had this little pop up here, but then we had this one lower. So overall we had sort of a bullish sentiment in terms of pressure on money coming into the market. So that's what we're seeing. Um, if we look at the advancers to decliners, but only look at the current 12 months, we see a lot of volatility. What we saw in 2019 when the market was just churning beautifully and we had this so-called great economy and the Dow just kept making new records, is we had advancers and decliners within a fairly decent range but now we've got extremes. We've got some days where the advancers, less decliners, are over 3,000. Or they are, um, sorry, they're over, over 2,000. Or they're under 2,000. We didn't see that kind of volatility back here. Look in here. All of 2019 kept within this line and this line. And that is not the case here. So we're looking for this to re return back to some sense of normalcy. Now let's look at the volume. Today's volume was pretty much uh, a lot of selling, but our volume was as low as any days last week. The um, advancers and decliners looked something like this. So a little bit like we saw last Thursday, very similar to last Thursday, just lower volume. Now let's look at how the cloud is affecting things. If we look at the S&P, we're still in a Gartley pattern. This is a bat, or an alternate bat pattern. A bat would have had B come up to 50%, an alternate bat is 38.2. We stayed above the 50 extended moving average, but we dropped below the 50 simple moving average we touched the cloud and got rejection. So the cloud is going to be important for the S&P. This is when you want to break through the cloud when it's the resistance is the thinnest. Um, it's going to get harder as the week goes on. 
Uh, we look at Apple, very similar. Apple has now had one, two, three, four, five days of rejection of the cloud. Same story here. You don't want to wait until we get out here when resistance is going to be very, very difficult. So Apple is fighting with the cloud. Um, Netflix. Netflix has made its Gartley. And I wanted to show you this one on Friday. You could almost say that it made this Gartley pattern, which was the second, the 61.8% extension of X to A. Almost made that, but sellers were not waiting for the full completion. They were waiting just below that. And that's part of the reason why uh, Netflix went down on Friday, just for technical reasons, because that Gartley pattern was probably viewed as being completed. What happens after this kind of a pattern is you see a down, up, and down, an A to B to C to D. So um, down wave, small up wave, another down wave, and then there's a possibility of starting another Gartley. So that's what we're going to take a look for now, that kind of a pattern. Um, let's go to Facebook. Facebook is a long way off from its first um, target here of 223.55 and this um, alternate bat pattern um, but it's keeping above the 50 and if we look at the uh, cloud we can see the same thing that we saw for the S&P and almost for Apple the cloud is now becoming resistance to Facebook Google um, still on on target for its um, this is not this is a different pattern this is not a bad pattern it's what they call a shark pattern because c is lower than a by 13 point 13 percentage points so you don't see shark patterns too often i'm not going to dwell on this one too long volume was really low in google today but let's take a look at the cloud cloud is becoming an issue here as well so we're seeing some similarities. Let's look at Amazon, which blew past its um, Gart true Gartley pattern because uh, B was almost 61.8%, pretty close. Um, topped out at 150. Now it's pulled back to 138.2. It's a little bit up today by $30, 1.28%, which is really good in a down market like this. Let's see how it's doing versus the cloud. And you can see that it broke through the cloud a long time ago. And the place it chose to break through was the area of least resistance. So Amazon is really off to the races. Caterpillar, um, rejection on Friday at the cloud. We did get into the cloud today, and the bottom of the cloud was used as an area of support. So Caterpillar didn't do that badly today. This is a doji where the price finished in between the high and the low. So buyers and sellers sort of just walked away, both content that neither one was able to win the day. Um, it's Gartley target. Uh, it's a um, full Gartley here, 61.8% where B is. Would have 137.06 as the target, but the cloud again comes into play. Um, Disney, let's look at the cloud. The cloud is coming into play. Uh, Home Depot. Cloud is definitely coming into play, but very little resistance. So there is a really good opportunity for Home Depot to make a recovery today. Now we finished down $2.54, but we had a bit of a choppy day. And I got out of 100 shares that I bought last Thursday with a short call. I just don't want to be as exposed to Home Depot as I currently am. That would give me like 800 shares. So I'm down to um, 700 shares, all of them covered with Home Depot. Let me just double check that to make sure. Um, 700 shares with seven short calls, two in May, one in June, and one in September. Uh, let's see what else have we got to look at here. Let's look at the banks because the banks probably didn't do too well today. And you can see that Bank of America down 3%, Goldman Sachs 1.5%, JP Morgan 3%. So this is telling you also the, about some nervousness in the economy. Citigroup down 2.8%, Citigroup 
uh, U.S. Bank Corp. 2.3%, and the XLF mutual fund of all of the banks was down 1.5%. Um, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is an exciting stock. Let's look at it relative to its cloud. And much like Amazon, it broke through the cloud, tried to get through at the weakest part, couldn't, fell below the cloud, and then just popped up, used that flat spot as... Um, as a place to anchor, get support, and pop up. So strong stock. Um, I'm st I've still got an eye on NVIDIA. A little bit of a pullback to the 8 EMA might be an opportunity. So let's create an alert here. When it touches the 8 EMA, I want to get an alert. And then I'm going to take a look at uh, going long. But it'll probably with be with September spreads. Um, remember we talked Friday about sell in May and go away. Let's keep an eye on the volume because that may be exactly what's going to happen. Sell in May, go away, and the traders are going to let the market, the um, election campaigns, the vice presidential pick, the economy, coronavirus, all that stuff work itself out before they get into a risk on position again.